What's up, world? Welcome to Cage Minds. As always, I'm your host, Micah. We're going to go over the results and our predictions for two shows. First one being UFC 136. It was Edgar vs. Maynard 3. First fight of the night. We'll get right to it. It was Steve Cantwell versus Mike Nascenzio. We thought it would be a unanimous decision for Steve Cantwell. It went the opposite way. Nascenzio got the unanimous decision, controlled the action, won the second and third round, causing the fight to be more of a brawling fight. Definitely took that one. Next fight was Aaron Simpson versus Eric Schaefer. We thought that Schaefer would win with the third round armbar. Simpson controlled the action, beat Schaefer up on the face, showed way improved hands. Aaron Simpson got the unanimous decision victory. Next fight was Taekwon Zhang versus Darren Elkins. We had predicted a unanimous decision victory from Darren Elkins using his re wrestling pressure top control. It's exactly how it went down. Got the unanimous decision victory. Next fight. Joey Beltran took on Stip Myomic, who was making his UFC debut. He used a lot of leg kicks. We thought it would be unanimous decision victory for him with his boxing, his wrestling, switching it up, mixing it up. It was a brawl. It was a fun fight to watch. And yes, he did get the unanimous decision victory. Steep Myopic, Myopic with his first UFC victory. That takes us to the spike fights. That was all the Facebook fights. First, first on the spike fights was Anthony Pettis versus Jeremy Stevens. We thought it'd be a unanimous decision for Pettis. I thought it was going to be a stand-up striking battle between the two guys. That part was wrong. Pettis winning via the split decision was the result. It was a very dynamic grappling and all-around mixed martial art battle. Very entertaining. Solid victory for Pettis. Very close fight, though. Next fight that was on spike was Damian Maya versus... Jorge Santiago. I thought that Maya would land a big shot, take it down to the ground in the second round, and get a rear naked choke. He didn't land the big shot. He wasn't able to get the takedowns. Ground control got a unanimous decision victory out of it for Damian Maya. That was the spike fights. This takes us now to the main card on the pay per view. As we had it, the first fight we had predicted on Leonard Garcia versus Nam Fan. We thought Nam Fan would get a unanimous decision victory, would right the wrong from his prior loss to Garcia. It was a fight of the night. Both men got bonuses. It went just the way we thought. A crazy wild out battle being edged down the scorecards by Nam Fan. A very entertaining fight. One of the best of the year. Next fight was Melvin Gillard versus Joe Lozon. We had it predicted as a second round TKO for Melvin Gillard. That was not to be. Joe Lozon gets the mission of the night with his first round rear naked choke. He actually got to the ground by clipping Gillard on the feet with the huge left hook. For me, very disappointed. I thought that Melvin Gillard had future champion written all over him. Very sad. Very big fan of his. He'll be back, but that was a hard loss as he was on his way to a title shot. Next fight, again, talking about a title shot. The winner of this would get one. Chow Sutton versus Brian Stan. Chow Sutton, we predicted we win by unanimous decision victory. We were right that he won. He did it in a very impressive fashion. His first stoppage, which I complained about in our prediction show that he wasn't a stopper, his first stoppage, a submission arm trial victory in the second round, first one in about three years. Calls out Anderson Silva after the fight. Hopefully Super Bowl week and we'll get to see Chow Sutton, Anderson Silva. Very interesting about this fight. Like we said, I gave it 30 seconds that Chow Sutton would stand with Brian Stan before going for a takedown. I think I counted about 16 seconds in the entire fight of them being on their feet. I was a little wrong about that one. Chow Sutton, definitely the best wrestler in the UFC. This is taking us now to the co-main event of the night, the featherweight title on the line. Champion Jose Alder versus the challenger, Kenny Florian. I had a unanimous decision victory predicted in my head. That's what happened. Jose was able to win four out of the five rounds as the judges saw it. Kenny Florian tried to use a lot of pressure, a lot of attempt and takedowns. The two rounds that were solidly in the judges' favor, that were solidly decisive in all those favor, was him falling on top of Florian, being in top control, and beating him up. Thunderous leg kicks, although landed the more devastating, more vicious shots, definitely took this fight. That's three strikes on Kenny Florian for title fights. Who knows? which division he'll fight in next, what he'll do next. It was a good fight. It was somewhat entertaining when it was off the cage. Jose Aldo, though, keeps rolling the featherweight champion. This takes us now to the main event of the night, Frankie Edgar versus Gray Maynard. We had this predicted as a unanimous decision for the champion, Frankie Edgar. Throughout the week from watching stuff on the countdown and just other things, it was my feeling that Edgar was getting a little 
cocky, but I was sticking with my prediction. Feeling that he was maybe a little unworthy of the uh, title and hoping a little more for Gray Maynard to pull off a good showing. We went to the fight, Gray Maynard and Frankie Edgar. It was a tremendous performance. From the moment it started off, it looked just like the first fight again. Maynard started landing some big slot shots, trying to finish Edgar. Edgar, so resilient, so full of heart, survived, started winning back round two, round three. In round four, while Maynard's attempting a takedown, then it goes to where Edgar's attempting the takedown and transition. They stand up, Edgar starts catching him, a hook, a bunch of combinations, about eight unanswered shots, four of them to drop Maynard, and then four more, we have a fourth round TKO. Frankie Edgar got TKO of the night, got a bonus, and a very good performance for him as he is still our uh, lightweight champion of the world. That being said, for our UFC 136, we're 8-3, being wrong on Melvin Gillard, Eric Schaefer, and Steve Cantwell. Now we predicted a win. Everything else was a right for us. That was 136. Now we're going to move on to Bellator 53. There were four fights that we knew of on the main card that I had said I thought Giva Santana would beat Daryl Cobb. That came to fruition. It was a submission by Armbar. Santana is the arm collector. Watch out for this guy in Bellator. Next fight was a qualifier for a featherweight tournament. Ronnie Mann versus Kenny Foster. I picked Ronnie Mann. He won with the submission, a triangle in the first round. Got taken down, went right for that triangle. Thought this fight would have been contested a lot more on the feet, but again, I was wrong on that one. Big win for Ronnie Mann, as this was his first bout without his uh, trainer, Sean Tompkins, in his corner uh, since his passing away. Next fight now were to where the semifinals of the welterweight tournament took place. Chris Lozano versus Douglas Lima. I picked Chris Lozano in this fight. Overall, thought he was just a little more vicious, aggressive, a little better at some stuff. It was not to be Douglas Lima with a way better performance than he had against Steve Carl. A second round knockout, a one-shot devastating knockout. Hugely impressive. Next fight was Ben Saunders versus Luis Santos, the last welterweight semifinal, and I had Batten Saunders selected for victory. He did that. I thought this would have been a Muay Thai contest. It would have been very entertaining on the feet. It ended up being a grappling exhibition where Santos took down Saunders, and Saunders showed his incredible jiu-jitsu off his back, ended up winning when he was on top with a key lock submission. So for Bellator 53, we were 3-1 on our picks, just out of the names that we had picked. So for the whole weekend, we went 11-4. and four. That was Cage Minds picks. Thanks for watching the show. We'll be back with Bellator 54 next week. If you're not, you should be following us on Twitter. Thanks for watching.